expecting to dominate the GP though, and, and somebody is such a strong player that uh, he should be able to have a relatively free lane. I do think that their composition here is is very low on damage. You yeah. do have heavy amounts of CC, and there are squishy members. So if you can get to those squishy members, you have the ability to lock them down and burst them out. You know, with with some of the damage here. You know, Lorem. We have seen Scions in the past even go things like Titanic Hydra, or sometimes even Sterics get a little bit more damage in there. So there is some options as long as as far as that goes. Yep. But but I, I feel like when you play these types of comps, if you do not absolutely nail your engage, you are yep. going to get kited out you are going to get slammed because your backline will not be able to keep up with their backline and your tanks are going to be kind of caught in this middle zone where it's like a phase rush Syndra, a phase rush Graves, GP is, is hitting barrel chains on your tanks and your front line is just getting slammed. So it's all on the engage in that case. They have to have the perfect sign ult, the great Nautilus assault coming across, locking down those members. And then if you can lock down that Graves, lock down that Syndra, you could burst them out and try to win that fight. Alrighty, well, we are onto the rift. We'll see if it can happen. The tank line is a bit small for 100 Thieves. They got a gangplank up at the top lane for Sunday, and Immortals get the first gin of the LCS split. It means Mark C gets a line bingo because Zoe got picked today. So congratulations, Mark. You got another uh, winning point here as we've got some CC in the bottom lane. Poom is just going to recall anyway. Like, you're padding the stats, and nothing is really getting gained here. It's not like you're getting spell thieves on or anything, but hey, you know what? Well, you take the poke when you can get it. I, and I actually disagree with you a little bit. What they do okay. get is they push him back, and then they can walk in safely for vision, right? If Tom Kench is, is high on health, um, then I do think that there's a little bit more risk to actually walking in on this invade. Uh, Tom Kench does have a pretty strong level one, so I, I think there's a little bit there, but I agree overall it's, it's not going to amount to much. And they didn't end up you know, even dropping any wards. They just kind of threatened it. So yeah. overall, it doesn't matter. Yeah, end of the day, though, you don't know because that got removed four years ago, the, like, little vision that happens when you drop a ward it used to have an animation you could tell when someone warded a brush that's gone so apollo could have pretended to ward it smith these gonna go ahead and knock this thing down gives the last hit to insanity they're gonna share xp alarm i believe out of range of that one but on the scion statistically very very good matchup into gang flank has a really high win rate in that matchup overall not saying it's a lane counter but the game tends to work out well for you so we'll see if yep. that comes through at some point but it's statistically and supported you actually do have pretty good time in the early phase. Uh, you have the ability to actually you know, push the GP. Uh, you have to be really careful about the passive. GP has such a strong level one. It was actually the W start from Lorem, which I'm not sure if that is, is normal, to be honest with you. I, I don't really play a lot of Scion myself, but um, going W, he doesn't really have any ability to fight back, and he's actually just getting queued on cooldown, plus the trial by fire is very dangerous. Yep. Level two smite fight here, potentially. Immortals is roaming up, but so is the 100 Thieves bottom lane, and and Sandy's coming down too. It's enough to keep him safe. So very interesting jungle pathing. Contracts going red to enemy blue, and Xmithy doing red to his own blue is there in time to defend it. That's, I mean, very interesting that it happened this way. End of the day, Contracts goes for the risk, and it's not uh, rewarded. And this is actually so much damage. Alorm is about to die. Has to flash, and someday Whoa. will break his shield, and he's got to be careful. That second barrel nearly hits some Alorms at 200 health already. Flashless as someday is relentless in that lane. Uh, Alorum only has two CS, and we'd have to get another look at that wave, but the wave didn't look like it was very good for him either. And you can't really base on too far. If, if you do, you don't even have a, you have nothing to buy. Yeah, and the oh, wave is screwed. Miserable. The wave is absolutely screwed. It's pushing away from him. He has gotten a fair bit of health back, but I mean, if you're someday, you just hold this wave, let it come to you. You don't need to do anything aggressive. He has trouble at fire pass because he just hit the barrel, so. Now you That's have what we call. to base That's a TP. On, on 3 CS, and you don't know where Graves is. So if you TP here and Graves is in your dry brush, Look, you Azale, just leave. One of the 3 CS was the cannon minion, okay? He can at least Ooh. afford a refillable potion. All right? And a control ward for the Graves gank. He is completely fine. Nothing could possibly <laughs> go better here. True. He's, he's spiking. He's, you know, he's, on <laughs> that, uh, he's on the big ward power spike. Lane is great now. And yep. honest, honestly... So uh, maybe, maybe there's, there's some tech here that I'm just not understanding with the W, but it's such a long cooldown at, at level one, and you can't really fight back. And, and like, I get the thought process of you use it to absorb some poke, but if the shield breaks, you can't actually pop it for return damage. So yep. I feel like the Q is just better, but 
I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something, and, and some 10 million mastery point scion can let me know exactly what the thought process here is. Either way, somebody played the lane very well. He used, made really good use of the trial by fire passive, that true damage burn. Constantly got that every time he did actually kill a barrel off. That resets your passive. And he has crushed this early laning phase, which is going to make it much more difficult uh, for Alorum going forward. Because the more comfortable the early laning phase goes for GP, the more quickly he's going to get to that sheen and towards that Triforce where you just can't pressure him anymore. Okay, Smithy wants to head down to the bottom side of the map. He's going to go through a ward. Haku is going to start running forward. Flash Q, and look at that timing. Boom, grabs him. And it's not even going to go through the body. No pull forward. Cody Sun is safe. Flash down, no gank. That also seemed like... Smithy wasn't going for the gank, right? As soon as the sweeper saw the ward, he started killing the ward, and Haku was flashing forward. If you're gonna actually go for that flash engage, I feel like Smithy needs to be continuing to move forward so that if there is that devour from Tom Kench, you can actually clap him back in, slow him down with the chillings, might find some sort of ability for your teammates to catch up. And it just seemed like there was uh, not, you know, not on the same page, basically. Well, they're going to find round two. They don't even get the root on a poom because he didn't take any damage yet. And Cody Sun just says, well, you anchored me, but I don't really have to care about this one. He's chugged a potion. Otherwise, his farm is fine. He's got more minions to kill. He's going to push towards him if he wants it to. And end of the day, this Caitlyn is having a nice, easy time here in this laning phase. Farming up nicely, but now the junglers spot each other yet again. Contracts and Nick Smithy can keep doing battle around this. Another anchor comes in, but again, Poom is there to save him. Running a bit low on mana, but now a fight continues as the junglers continue to scrap. And Contracts gets way better on that half, but 200 health on this poor set is pushed all the way out of the river, all the way out of the jungle, and he might just take a recall onto the turret. I mean, Set has no health built up right now. He has the Chilling Smite. There's no way you're going to actually win that fight against Graves, who had the Challenging Smite, which is so much better for the dueling, plus just the ability to kite you out. Sure, you can proc the Phase Rush on Set, but with the Quick Draw, Graves is able to create that space, and now we'll just be able to start up this Dragon. Probably going to need some help, though, as uh, you do take quite a bit of damage doing this by yourself, but has the Smite for a heal and does have the Honey Fruit, but getting fairly low. Poom's going to finally walk over. Cody Sun did have the chance to go. He had already shoved the wave in. He's going to be reasonably safe. End of the day, Contracts gets the damage he needs. Easy auto smite gets it. Ocean Drake grabbed at 620. And End of the Dean's feeling good about picking the early aggressor in the jungle matchup. Takes the dueling lead and feels good. Insanity gets some damage on a Ryoma. Mid lane very close, but small lead to Ryoma here overall in the early game as top lane is still double CS, 52 to 26. Top lane is boom, so 100 Thieves feeling really good about their chances in this game. Somebody has been such a big win condition for 100 Thieves, and generally so goes Someday, so goes 100 Thieves. It often feels like he is really good at snowballing advantages and actually making that count big time. So we will see what they want to do as far as uh, playing this one out. They don't have really any engage. That's one of the things kind of working against Hundred Thieves. So it, it's not as though they can just like set up bot and, and dive very easily with GP ult. So I, I do think that the idea here is just going to be try to play for winning lanes, try to snowball through objectives, you know, force your opponents to come to you at those neutral objectives, you know, at the dragon and things like that. And that is how Hundred Thieves are going to find their fights where they can then you know, try to kite out and, and slowly kill off immortals. Well, both top laners a bit low on mana as they trade back and forth, but someday has biscuits in case he needs it. Big burst of mana when you take those down. Gets the cannon there as well, and put it back by Alorum's Q. Yeah, so someday able to easily play this lane as much as he wants. Gets some more poke at Alorum. This poor scientist has to play this lane defensively. He's low on mana. Waits around for when he can next press W, next press Q, and get the occasional CS. Barrel Chain's not quite going to land there. You can see 68 CS now, highest in the game. Someday has been pushing his opponent out of lane while still farming at a good clip. And you just feel bad for poor Alorum taking a match that he wanted, but getting outplayed in it so far. Yep, and I think he picked it more for their comp rather than the matchup. You know, Scion, I don't, I don't think he's thinking, ah, I'm going to slam this guy with the Scion. But uh, either way, it went really bad for him. And the Sheen buy coming in here very early. And, you know, on GP, you're not expecting to be able to get perfect farm in most matchups. You're usually having to give some up here and there in the early levels. But Someday has been able to win the trades. He's been able to get the farm. He's on a great buy here. Does have ultimate. So Immortals have to be careful. But it could be a smite fight here as we'll see who wins it. Certainly possible. Finds the stun. Gets some decent damage. Good smite comes through. Smithy grabs it. Grabs the eye as well. But now he has to worry about ulting backwards into a flash of the wall to stay alive. Snipe nice from Cody Sun oh! nearly kills him, and someday does the rest. It cost him three ults, but they all line up and they grab the kill. Hako has to run away. He's got to be careful. Ryoma goes in, summon or heal. 
grabbed by Insanity, keeps that man safe enough. That is 100 Thieves on the board with the kill, on board the first Drake, but at least the Herald went to Xmithy. That was honestly really well done by Xmithy. I thought he was going to get out, but Caitlyn TP'd in and ulted him. <laughs> it did him yep. low enough that the GP ult kills him off, so hard to expect all of that stuff coming in there. Xmithy does get the eye plus the smite and gets out, so I think it's, it's honestly not that bad, all things considered. And here we can see it one more time. Uh, 100 Thieves were the ones starting this up. Contracts had sold this down very, very low. And Xmithy, Q plus Smite, lands there. And then steps behind Contracts, dunks him to the wall to get room for the Flash. Flash is over. But ult, ult. Raves ulti over the wall. Caitlyn ulti over the wall. <laughs> the red burn from the challenging Smite plus the GP ulti. So triple ults coming across in yep. the final moments. For good measure, he even had a Corrupting Potion going when he gameplay ulted him. Just like a little <laughs> bit more burn, just to really make sure. You know, every possible choice might have even had uh, Scorch. Who knows? Regardless, goodbye to you. I will say, to recap top lane, we are staying at 19 CSD. The first four levels were catastrophic. They were really rough, and I feel bad for Alorum and every Scion player out there. It has stabilized since then, and as much as Gangplank stacks gold infinitely with his Q, Cyan gets to stack health infinitely with the W, and so they're both scaling to infinity. He, he will be able to stabilize, I would think. You know, once he gets a Sunfire, uh, you know, you start getting some levels, it, it becomes very hard to actually, you know, do enough damage to really threaten uh, that Scion, but uh, GP is also kind of not really threatened himself. You know, you can see he's pretty comfortable to actually walk up and even get the Demolish off on the turret. Uh, that's not a position you really want to be in as the Scion. You're hoping that you're strong enough that you can actually just step forward with the W up, you QE the wave, you pop the W, you kill the wave, and you try to just keep him away from the turret. So if he can get to that spot, he can definitely stabilize. But uh, as someday works to the Triforce, it's going to be more about those team fights, and we'll just see how how much of an advantage he can really get in those team fights from his early gold lead. Well, Ryoma feeling comfortable in the mid lane. Contracts nearby. A pair of control wards at the top river. Makes that movement really, really safe and really comfortable to do. Going through his third control ward, just out of range of the next ward right there. Goes heads and keeps the vision going. Four control wards, top river right now for 100 Thieves. They're really playing around that side of the map. They're fifth in the bottom river to help keep their someday player safe. As we can see, again, Immortals trying to fight back for the waves. They put their own ward down and drop that count back to four overall. Still, though, 1,400 gold lead to 100 Thieves. Feeling pretty comfortable in the early game off the kill they've gotten. Top laner still fighting close back and forth. Sunfire Cape not yet done. He's going to ult to walk back to lane. One of the nice things about, you know, mid-game Scion is you're usually not ulting for team fights right away, so you can kind of save your teleport and just ult for wave control. Yep, and you kind of use it as, as a pseudo TP, right? It's also one of the reasons that he's really hard to bully, bully in lane because you basically can use your teleport to get to six, and then you have another kind of like semi-teleport with the ult to get back to lane again, but... Insanity will be forced to flash here. It is interesting yeah. that neither team were actually playing towards the dragon with the dragon spawn, Rift Herald already taken. You know, they're so much pressure around this top lane because Immortals want to use the Rift Herald to try to take down first tower. And we wanted to see Hunter Thieves stop that. Now they're going to go for the engage. Anchor forward, dunk, couple of roots, a lot of stuns here. Who's going to get focused? Cody Sun's going to flash away. GP ult pushes them back. And that's going to be no pickups They're just behind yet. Them. Careful, though, the turret damage is there. Smithy finally summons Rift Herald. It'll only take two plates. Realm is here. Ulti list, but has Flash and the chance at a stun. Here comes the TP in. They're going to let Hakuo tank the ulti in for the Caitlyn. Finally gets the charge. That's two plates going over to Smithy. So sets a bit richer. That's a double stun, though. Realm needs one more hit. They're going to knock down Apollo. And it's time to run away. Immortals are slow onto Alorum. He has no ult to kite away easily. And they will knock him lower and lower in health. There's going to be at least a plate from auto attacks, maybe more, as they can push in for a lot here. That was really well played by Someday because he just focuses Apollo, knowing if Apollo is, is knocked out of the fight, if he is low on health and can't enter, there's no more damage. You have a tank set, a support Nautilus, and then the Scion, right? No one there is actually going to threaten the health of these members on 100 Thieves. And they win on that top side while preventing the first hurt from going down and grabbing their second dragon. So. 100 Thieves in a great spot at this point in the game. And Immortals are going to be really reliant on Apollo for this damage. So let's watch this one more time. They decide they want to try to go for this dive. And they very heavily committed to it. I honestly thought that they could have just gone for a turret place and then dropped the Herald. Xmithy gets the dunk, pulls them together. Right as that Nautilus ultimate expires, he claps Cody Sun back in. The Ignite was not enough to kill him. But then they're behind him. So Ryoma coming in here. The GP ultimate had already been dropped. He was TP'd in. 
Someday is just going straight for Apollo because, yes, Scion is coming in, but you know Scion has no ultimate. And as that barrel chain lands, Someday got him so low, and it was only one Q and an auto to finish him off from Ryoma. And as soon as their marksman is down, there's just no damage left because Insanity wasn't there. And also on the other side of the map, Contract's able to solo the Cloud Drake, and look at that, 100 Thieves. You can see the gold lead 2,000 15 minutes into this game, plus the fact that, hey, they've got kills on the board, they've got the two Drakes, they're feeling really good about this one. So 100 Thieves on their way, getting closer and closer, securing playoffs and making that one happen. 100 Thieves feeling good. Immortals on the outside, and more and more on the outside looking in, hoping to find a win at some point to turn that season around. But now a play towards the jungler. Guess what, though? Boom is here. Knock him right back out. No play for Smithy. Be careful because suddenly Syndra is back. And Poom gets revenge for the laning phase. Knocking down Hakuo. Instead, and now forced to run away. And again, 100 Thieves getting the better of every single fight. They just have way more threats. So unless you can instantly kill someone as Immortals, you know, every member except Bomb Kench is, is doing a lot of damage. So, you know, Apollo is sitting there, you know, popping his ult or a little bit far back, you know, following up with the root. It's not even though he, he played it wrong. It's just he's the only member there to actually deal any damage. So as soon as he can't burst them down, nothing else is happening. And Smithy was clearing that ward as they go in. We'll see if they continue. Big chunk on Sunday. Forced a flash to stay alive as he was going to run out of health before too terribly long. Smithy, of course, ulti list doesn't have the best gank pressure overall as that was burned a little while ago. As the barrel goes down, Alorum's combo just doesn't do that much damage. Someday's going to easily sustain back up. He's got the Triforce. He's got CDR and mana. Eats some oranges. Knocks down some minions. Barrel too when he wants it. And again, you can see Insanity forced to play now defensively in the mid lane. Has some MR, does have Barrier right now, but gets stunned up, and that's decent damage. Just goes through the Summoner, because might as well. Yep, just going to keep that Summoner spell book rolling. Ryoma, though, already on that Luden, is feeling pretty good. Just trying to keep Insanity locked under his turret. Keep one of those two threats on the Immortals team and really in check here. And we do have Apollo pushing down on that bottom side, but Cody Sun. You know, is at a stronger mark right now. I assume that Apollo should have his Infinity Edge gold here very shortly. And Immortals are going to have to kind of make their stand at this next fight, which could be tough. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Alorum right now, getting hit a fair bit. Contract staying in the way, so no ulti can bring him to safety. He wasn't up anyway, and the health bar is getting lower and lower. About a 1,000 left on him. Barrel's going to land again. Auto's under the turret. Not going to be enough to kill, and someday will be stunned in front of the turret. Eats the orange and walks away. Gets about as well as he gave, ultimately, but it's still going to be a forced recall out of the Scion, who has no ulti, has no TP, and can't get back to top lane easily. That turret's going to run out of health fast. Exactly. That's that's the major win there, as they are going to take down that turret. And even on Sunfire Cape, he is a very tanky boy against that double AD threat. And GP and Graves not getting much done onto that Scion. But it, it's going to be about this next fight. It's going to be about the third dragon, unless Immortals just want to give that one up, which... It's pretty much always when people will fight uh, to try to prevent soul point. So if they go for it, I'm just not sure that they're going to be at a strong enough point where they can really threaten the burst. And Insanity has gone more for kind of the, the utility style build here uh, with the Hextech GLP instead of the Ludens, which also means, you know, one of your two damage dealers is not going for, for kind of this optimal damage build. Uh, and I do have a, a lot of concerns about whether or not Immortals can actually burst anyone down. Because with Tom Kench behind them, with Heal and Guardian, you're not only just going to have to get the first CC, you're going to have to like CC someone up, force a Devour, and then block someone else down and burst them down, most likely. Well, it's going to be tough because the damage isn't quite there. And, well, guess what? Poom is doing a really good job with all this. Stopwatch, Stone Plate soon. Ryoma going to be slept and well, contracts next to him. So Insanity is not going to get enough done. Nearly had the chance. You can see Someday is a very rich man. Gangplank cheats a bit, but he's still gigantic. He's got solo turret gold. First turret of the game went to him. And now we can see more pressure coming around the map. Mountain Drake spawning in seven seconds. Mid lane will fall to this one. The charge should be enough to kill it outright. And it is. As that one drops down, 5,000 gold lead 100 Thieves. Not all of it can be spent, but their inventory is still better. I had done on both AD carries. Mountain Drake started here for contracts. Will Immortals even show up? Can they even try? Scion walking forward. Alorum going to help kill some wards. Sleep's not going to land. When can they do anything? Stun's going to go in there. Be careful. This is a low health bar. The ult's going to start landing. And it's Sanity below 1,000. If Ryama ulted him, that might have actually been the kill. He was only rank one ulting. is rank two. Is yeah, the trap line is so difficult to actually walk through. So they, they step forward, and Insanity gets chunked out. All right, back to base. Can't do anything. If, if Insanity's not there, you definitely don't have enough damage. And Apollo did have to commit the heal. So 
without much of any scrap whatsoever, 100 Thieves will get themselves that third dragon. And feeling like 100 Thieves have kind of just outdrafted, outplayed thus far. You know, mortals are going to have to find something pretty special when you're falling this far behind early on against what is a, a really difficult comp for them to deal with. You can't even necessarily focus down this Tom Gench because the stone plate is going to make him pretty darn tanky, at least for a, a window of time. Yeah, and a large portion of this is honestly 100 Thieves just playing better. They, they are the stronger team, even though the records look close at 5 and 10 versus 4 and 11. 100 Thieves inherited a 1 and 5 start to this roster as things switched around, as contracts came in, as Poom came in. It looked a lot better. They're about to go 50-50 on this roster so far with wins that we kind of expect them to clean up. I'm kind of expecting 100 Thieves to go 8-10 and 10 to close out this season. They can actually fight for an upper bracket spot right now. They're certainly taking care of business in this matchup. We're going to see another fight in the top side. And yeah, it's a very, very tanky Scion. Someday at the end of the day, loses half his health and doesn't get nearly the same back as he gave. Won't take damage there. But Alorum can slowly try to work that one through a bit longer. And he will still be a big, heavy frontline for team fights. But the problem is, as you've been mentioning time and again, the consistent damage isn't there, and the, the front line the 100 Thieves has is good enough. And as somebody gets towards his Essence Reaver, he's going to be pretty close to that. You have 40% CDR, so you actually have quite good sustain in those side lanes, even just by you know eating the oranges over and over to heal back up off of those traits. And he's more just looking to, to wave clear and, and keep that pressure up. 100 Thieves now doing a great job getting deep vision, looking to invade, looking to take away as many resources as possible from Immortals to just continue extending this gold lead. It's now up over 6,000 gold in the lead, three minutes until soul point. And that is where it's, it's going to be all up to Immortals. Uh, Mountain Dragon, I do think, is is really tough when you are also low damage and burst reliant, as Zoe and Jin are, as the yeah. damage dealers here. Um, you know, they kind of have to one-shot someone, uh, or you're not going to win the extended fight. Uh, and okay. it's going to be tough to do that. They might try. They're not going to get this one as the flash is out of range. Smithy gets the shield and tries to run away. But here comes the re-engage. A dunk by some time. Is it enough damage, though, as GPL comes over the top? Hawk will burn the stopwatch. Contract's burning down. One more auto will kill him. And it's still not going to be enough. Two kills again picked up for 100 Thieves. Every single kill is a counter-engage of Immortals trying and never getting enough. Allure will walk away and stay alive. But 100 Thieves have given up nothing all game. That's so heartbreaking for, for uh, Immortals, not even getting that kill on the Graves. Xmithy felt like he had the range to actually not flash in for the clap together. There was no flash on Ryoma, though. So if you actually land that clap on the initial stun, if you just flash for this and land that clap guaranteed, you could maybe get behind Dead. him and actually ult him back in, and then you probably have that kill. Yeah, but instead, he doesn't go for it, thought he had the range and could kind of eke it out, has to use the flash defensively, and look at Contract so low with the Ignite. Poom flashes to the wall, heals him up, has the Devourer as the Lorem flashes in, trying to finish him off. They just don't have the damage. Jin is not there. The response was great from 100 Thieves, and you can see even Contracts was moving to the wall to get closer for that flash heal from Poom. So good communication between those two members to keep their jungler alive. A minute 30 now until uh, this dragon spawns. You can see two items for Rayoma. The Essence Reaver Triforce, very expensive, very strong build is done for someday. And Cody's Sun should also have his Rapid Fire. But it doesn't look like the Immortals members are going to have their two item spikes. So they're going to no. be massively behind for this fight that they now must win to have a chance in the game. they got to find a way. They've got double magic pen and insanity. He's level 13. The Q scales with champion level. He's doing OK in that regard. I don't know how Jin's going to kill anyone, unfortunately. Someday has got to feel real comfortable, right? Ninja Tab be done, Max CDR, Stopwatch if he needs it. There's so many good defensive tools on 100 Thieves' side. And honestly, Immortals right now are getting perfect games. So many of these results have been really close. They have nearly gotten kills a couple of times. You've had, you know, sub-100 health bars in a couple of these, but at the end of the day, right, have not been able to do enough. 40 seconds now on Mountain Soul. That'll make those marks even harder to get to. And the Thieves. As a squad, the Poom Gang running through, getting vision, <laughs> looking to fight Smithy in his own jungle. Stun's going to be there, the punch in as well. But look how low the health bars get. Jin can open up for enough to kill Contract. He walks in a bit too much. Maybe this is the re-engage. Cyanult has been burned. Realma a little bit low. Can there be something? The Drake is spawning in 18 seconds, and Contract will not be alive. If there is a time to show up, it is now for Immortals. 
Contracts just getting very brazen there, dashing blind into the wolf pit at the graves. Right as the soul is spawning, you can play for the soul, man. You don't have to go for the wolves. But instead, he does get taken down, Immortals, with the punish here. And now they have Smite on Zoe as well as their jungler. So they have double Smite here as long as it doesn't expire. And they've got to try to push for this. You can't allow Contract's time to get back. Yep. And 400 Thieves to just take this for free. You need this dragon to keep your hopes alive. 100 Thieves would love to delay. GP ult over the top. Hako instantly dead. It's back to a four on four. And by the way, if you haven't noticed, 100 Thieves have a gold lead. Ult in the back line only breaks Banshee's Veil off of Ryoma. He's got to try to run for his life. He's going to get sniped and he's not going to get it blocked in time. Nice try to allure him. It's not going to happen. Boom. Not knocked into the air either. They Contracts couldn't find that stun. They could still try to burn this down, but they don't have a jungler. And good luck to the rest. The stun is going to land. Alorum is going to die. The zombie scion can attack something. He can try to chase Ryoma, but he's been stunned. He's been attacked. He's been trapped, and he's going to drop. Mountain Soul is going to come through. Not a problem for Contracts to win this battle. There's not even a fight back. Claims it, and the chase on towards insanity. There's at least a kill for Immortals. Not a perfect game, but they have no chance in this one. They have just been absolutely dismantled. It feels like everything from draft to play, they are getting slapped around by 100 Thieves, who's able to win. This is just a 4v5. Their jungler is dead. He's coming back from base, and they are still looking for it. They know how strong they are, and Xmithy tries to go for the turnaround, but the GP ult is still there. So you honestly can't really walk forward into it. Apollo and Insanity just can't even seem to hurt the top catch. The support is too tanky for him, and at this point, 100 Thieves has done a great job buying enough time for Contracts to get back from base. He arrives, the dragon was always going to be theirs from that point, and Poom is even wrapping around. He's preparing for the, the next eventual part. Cody's son moves up, and they're able to chase down. Well, the second item finally came through for Apollo. Rapid Fire Cannon is in, but of course, we're practically at three for Cody's son already, as the last Whisper is in inventory. And the gold lead is uh, over 8,000. Mountain Soul is on. The chance to come back, very, very slim. And Sanity, I'm not even gonna fall off to sleep. Wave will be cleared, and Baron is in the eyes of Honda Thieves. You can see a lot of ward control. They've got one in the Baron pit, one in the brush in front of it. They've got the scuttle. They're gonna get rid of all their other wards as well. And top jungle right now belongs to 100 Thieves. They've stolen it away. 9,000, the gold lead, as Immortals can only defend small parts of their base. And Sanity gonna lose about a quarter of his health from the low attack damage build for Cody's son. He's gonna go knock down some more minions. Not gonna fall asleep either. Easy wave clear, easy push. Bot lane tier two gone now as well. Very impressive damage in that team fight from Ryoma. I think he out damaged all of Immortals by himself. Uh, mm -hmm. If he didn't, it was very close. So team fighting well there. You know, staying at range while still getting his damage down. And Caitlyn back in the meta. Very good at taking towers. When you are ahead, as this Caitlyn, it's a clear win condition. You have Tom Kench behind you, walk up to the turrets, knock them down. Tom Kench is, is there to be your get out of jail free card if they are looking for the engage. And they are just trying to clear out all the vision in this area. There's still a pink behind them that they, I assume, eventually will notice. But the okay. GP is coming in. This is going to be potentially that final fight for Immortals. Their last attempt. Ult's going to land. They get some damage on the boom. The Duncan on the front line as well. Contracts back to safety. And by the way, the health bar is nearly full. A punch for Xmithi. He's running away for his life. The big ult comes across. And Contracts claims that kill as well. A stun on Sunday doesn't matter. Now onto Alorum. He's going to get shut down as well. Easy shot. Boom. Does he get the kill credit? Does he? He doesn't. It goes to Cody's son. But regardless, it's still a 2 <laughs> 0. Thumbs up comes up. You know what? Let him kill the minions. We don't even care. Go ahead. Knock down the wave. We're done with this one. Take the recall. Look at Baron next. Good attempt for Immortals, but too little, too late. They are not able to get anything really done there. Alorum kind of had to go for it. You know, that's the only ward they added out on the map, and they needed to try something with, with some sort of TP flank. You're not going to win this game by slow playing it and giving over Baron. There's no chance of that, so they go for it, but they can only find Boom. And Apollo, oh, Apollo. you got no flash, my friend. You are Apollo, dead. which one is this? Ooh, 13 doesn't make it back home. That's not going to be great. Well, unlike 13, I got my, you know, it's fine. We're going to move on. Baron's going to go down. Easily claimed here as well. 3v1, not even a close fight. 13,000 gold lead. It's even hard for Jin to find ultimates in these fights. You know, as I, I think it was actually a barrel chain that stopped Apollo from the ult, uh, as they did at least get contracts kind of low, but the initial ultimate is dodged out on by contracts. But contracts gets dunked back in the team. They have some good initial bursts. 
But yeah, then the GP ult over the wall, Apollo put very, very low. He has to flash away looking for the ulti, but immediately forced back as somebody was for, you know, threatening another barrel chain. He's just chasing Apollo around. He knows that as long as he is actually threatening the carries in these fights with the barrels, they can't get enough damage out to ever win a fight. So. Now, somebody has just been playing this one so well the whole game through. Now has Lord Dominix plus another BF sword. He is ridiculously fed and really just putting on a clinic here on the GP. Yeah, this game is ending pretty shortly here. A 14,000 gold lead for 100 Thieves. They've got the Baron buff on. They're ready to close the game out during this one. they got a two-minute timer with minions that are practically invincible to PvP combat. At least the opposing champions combat. Alorem goes in but can't quite find the stuns, and the siege will continue. Contract splits from the bottom side of the map. Get that turret done a half HP. Mid still under fire, by the way, and that means two autos will kill it. Skittison walks up, chunks it down, and the turret is gone. As there's still a cannon wave to push in. Still a cannon minion there as well. Two in the bottom side. That turret's very, very low. Contracts gets pulled back in. They might finally find the kill. They dunk him. They burn like 17 ultimates, and they find a single kill. But the mid is already gone. It's a 5v4, and I don't think Hunter Thieves care. They still got more gold in their pocket deep without contract, and they're going to push in for this one. <laughs> Report contracts. Two deaths, the only two keeping them away from the perfect game. This man is trolling, but 100 Thieves pushing in. They grab both the inhibs, and Immortals do get a kill there, but it doesn't buy them much of anything except a little bit more time. 100 Thieves looking far too strong at this point. They are in full control and looking like they want to set up for this Elder Dragon. Uh, they have the Baron buff. It will be shortly overlapping with the Elder Dragon spawn, so they can even look towards taking that fight potentially with the Baron buff still active. Alrighty. Well, that's going to be happening pretty soon. The recall's coming through. Tom Kench now has Locket to make it even more obvious that no, no one is dying this game. Boom is going to keep everybody alive for the entirety of it. 2-0 and 5. There's a nice stun for Ioma. Goodbye, Apollo. Aqua can run. He's going to be slowed down. Insanity happens to tank the uh, shot from Caitlyn. Does kill a barrel. They're still trying to run for his life. Barely gets away from the rest of the damage here. Can't quite hit Ryoma, so goodbye. Get out of your own base. Please run back to the fountain. We will claim your structures. Thank you very much. Alorum's still running away. Smithy's back here as well. Apollo open 25. And you know what? Why don't they just end the game? Who needs to stack dragons any more than this one? The Nexus Church will do just fine. 31 minutes in. Another re-engage. 4v5. Trying their very best to stop what stops. The kill, Alorm gonna do the same. A stun for a Smithy. Gets himself a punch, but it's not gonna be enough. Alorm is going to drop. The second Nexus turret will fall, and 100 Thieves will improve to six wins. They will keep fighting for that playoff spot. They've got one to go until they lock it up. Immortals have to find some way to knock down a top team to make their way in, and those chances look grim. Well played, 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves moving a game ahead of CLG, who is that cutoff right now. CLG sitting at 5 and 11. Immortals and Dig going to be at 4 and 12. And 100 Thieves, you know, giving themselves some safety here. Uh, the worst case for them now would be a tiebreaker, uh, I do believe. Yeah. So, you know, really uh, feeling pretty good about their chances to get in, especially with some of the difficult opponents that the teams below them have remaining. So this was a critical win for 100 Thieves. And again, they, they continue the trend of in wins, they look so good. They crush their opponents, but they haven't yet been able to find that consistency to string together a lot of those wins. We'll see if they can build on that going into next week. But I've got to give so much credit to Someday. He was incredible this whole yep. game long, dominated the 1v1 early against Lorem, was able to be very effective in a lot of these team fights, landing critical barrel chains, threatening the carries uh, on Immortals. But... Immortals, I, I feel like, really drafted themselves into a hole in this one. It did feel like they had uh, slim chances to win from the get-go. Very low consistent damage. You know, if you're just going to have two damage threats, having it being a poke champ and you know a, a marksman who who really only excels at, at kind of like burst. I don't know. It's it, it felt it felt very yeah. tough for them to win from the position they drafted themselves into. Yeah, I mean, half of the damage on Jin is missing health damage, right? If you get ahead early, you snowball through, right? If you have the lead, it goes the rest of the way, no problem. But there was never that lead for Immortals. I give credit to Contracts for trying to bully Xpithy out the entire time. You saw him chunk the guy out at five minutes and just take uh, Drake control for that one. Ultimately, better down the line, right? Every single player, I think, outperformed their opposite member on 100 Thieves. Well-deserved win from top to bottom. Draft was good. Play was good. Team fights were good. Well done. And that means they are so very, very close to locking playoffs. So a good game from them. And now we're going to take a quick break. When we come back on the other side, we've got the Verizon Post game interview with Poom.